Hello, my name is Yaroslav Pankovsky and I am a solution specialist at Anko Business Solutions. This post is going to discuss dimensions in Microsoft Dynamics NID. Two other posts which are available on an Anko blog are also dedicated to this topic, but to different areas of this topic. So the first one was dedicated to dimensions um, in general and has defined dimensions and dimension values in Microsoft Dynamics NLV and has covered uh, why they are important. Another blog post entitled How to Create Dimensions and Dimension Values in Dynamics NLV has covered the topic of creation of dimension and dimension values in Dynamics NLV. So it was a little bit more practical and is of interest to those people who are setting up dimensions for their companies. Today, we are going to discuss how to assign dimensions to master data and general ledger accounts in Dynamics NID. The two points I would like to make before we proceed to the examples in the application. Uh, number one, master data are such data in Dynamics NID as uh, customers, vendors, and items. Today, we are going to use customers as an example, but vendors and items uh, are very similar when it comes to dimensions. So dimensions can be assigned to all three uh, types of data, customers and uh, vendors and uh, items in a similar way. Another thing to point out is that we are going to be using Dynamics NAV 2017 and um, dimensions are again quite similar in other versions of the application, uh, at least uh, the previous versions. So if you're using a different version, uh, dimensions are probably assigned in a similar way there. So this post might be of interest to you as well. Let's go to the application. And uh, as I can mention, we're going to be using customers today and customers can be located by searching in the search box and it's enough to start, type, start typing, it's right there. And, or since I'm using the sales order uh, processor profile, I can easily reach out to customers by going to the navigation pane and selecting the appropriate link there. You can of course also go to the departments and locate uh, customers there. So in uh, uh, this company, Kronos Canada Incorporated, the customer number 10,000 has the following setup of uh, dimensions. So if you want to set up a dimensions or to see how the uh, dimensions have been set up, it is necessary to go to the uh, navigate tab in the ribbon, then dimensions, and finally dimensions single. We are going to discuss what dimensions uh, as multiple is used for a little bit later. So first of all, let's do this. All right, so Kronos Canada has already set up uh, four different dimensions for this customer. And um, the first one is area. So we have three different fields here. And first one is dimension code, and that's area. And the dim so dimension value that corresponds to this code is 30, which means that this is North Europe. So probably this customer is located in North Europe. And um, the third field is very interesting, value posting. And you can see that um, four choices are available here. And um, all four lines have different choices, so we're going to discuss each of these choices. On the first line, we have code mandatory. This means that when this customer is going to be used on transactions such as sales orders, for instance, the dimension for this customer will come up as, as um, North uh, Europe North. So the code is mandatory. It means that we have to provide some code. But what code we will be providing is up to us. On the line two, we have a dimension customer group and its uh, dimension value is uh, medium and the value posting is same code. Well, same code means that whatever we have specified here is mandatory and we cannot change it. So anytime this customer is used in a transaction, dimension value code will be medium. Line number three has department dimension and the dimension value is sales, and the value posting is blank. Well, since it is blank, we can, uh, we can uh, ignore this dimension. We can also select any dimension value we want. So the system will prompt, will suggest 
sales, but it's up to us to overwrite this. So that's what uh, value posting blank is used for. Finally, the fourth dimension that has been assigned to this customer is purchaser. And you can see that the dimension value code is in, in this case is blank, although some are available. And if you will see if I select, um, if I select anything, I will get uh, an error message. So I'm going to um, refresh the page to get rid of the uh, warning message. And you can see it defaults back to empty. Why so? Well, because the value posting is set to no code. No code means that this particular dimension which carries this no code value posting cannot be used with this customer. And it makes perfect sense because when we are dealing with customers, we are not dealing with purchasers. It's the sales side, not the uh, purchasing side. All right, so that's how we are assigning dimensions to customers. Now, you have seen the other choice that we have there, and that's dimension, uh, dimensions multiple. When this comes in handy, well, um, when, for example, you would like to set up a new company or multiple customers at the same time. For example, all the customers that are um, preceding the uh, customer that we have just had a look at, they have uh, no dimensions assigned to them at all. So I'm going to show you two as an example. But what if we want to save some time and assign the same dimension, dimension values, and value posting to all of them uh, at the same time? So for this purpose, we can select them all by dragging the selection here on the left. We can, of course, uh, uh, press Shift and then select another customer so everything is between and selected. Or we can, uh, can pick the customers by pressing Control on your keyboard and selecting the customers we want. So let's say we want to assign the same dimensions to these three customers. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, go back again to the Navigation tab in the ribbon go to the dimensions and select dimension, dimensions multiple. You can see that now dimensions single is grayed out, so I'm unable to select that, even if I try. So I can only select this. And if I start uh, assigning, I first have to press edit list. And if I start assigning something, for example, area, I want uh, to assign the same dimension value as to the previous uh, customer. For example, uh, make it uh, code mandatory. So, and now I press uh, OK. And you remember that before we did this, all these had no dimension uh, or dimension values assigned at all. Now, if I go to number one and press Control shift d or press on dimension, so you can do it either way, now this is assigned uh, to this particular uh, customer. And if I go to another one for which we have uh, specified the dimension, you can see that it's also there. Now, uh, let's go to uh, sales orders. And we are now on the sales orders page and um, let's create a sales order as an example. I'm going to press Control N. You can use the choice in the ribbon. You a sales order. So let's name it something. I'm going to select the same customer as we have uh, just seen. I'm going to remove sales uh, person code because it's irrelevant to our example. And let's select, select an item, um, for example, the ream, to two. The unit price can be anything. Let's set it to 10, for example. Uh, again, it's not, it's not uh, relevant to our example, but it has to be pulled out. And as you can see, whatever dimensions have been set up on the customer are now reflected on the line level. And it is very convenient, especially if you have, if you have multiple lines, uh, instead of creating uh, the or assigning the dimension line by line, uh, they are now auto-filled because we have assigned the dimensions to the customer. As you probably remember, the department code was set to um, value posting blank, which means that I can either select anything I want here without any issues or just uh, leave it out completely, for example, leave it blank also. And I'm going to post this document now to show you that the document is going to be posted without any issues. And we are going to have a look at the results. So it has been posted. Do you want to open the posted invoice? Yes, please. 
Now I'm going to press Align and Dimensions. We also use the Control Shift D combination. And you can see that uh, our dimensions that have been set up on the line level for that specific sales order are now reflected here. And again, this is based on our um, dimension setup of that particular customer. But what if the company, uh, if uh, our company, for example, wants us to be very accurate on the uh, reporting and so the, the department dimension should be specified and uh, we don't want uh, that to be missed on the revenue accounting question. Well, in that case, we need to assign dimension to the revenue account in question to, again, to elim eliminate the chance of an error. So let me show you how it works and it will become um, clear when we um, go over an example. So I'm going to go to the chart of accounts because I want to uh, identify my uh, uh, revenue account, which is responsible for these kind of transactions for uh, uh, retail sales. So it's 44100 for this particular company. Now I'm going to go exactly to the same place as for the customer to navigate tab to dimensions and dimension single. So right now you can see the dimension code is blank Everything is blank here. Now, since I want my reporting to be accurate with respect to the department dimension, what I need to do is to select my department dimension and to uh, select value posting as uh, code mandatory. This will mean that whatever customer, whatever postings are uh, being done to this account, they will have to be entered with the department uh, uh, dimension value, but dimension value can be anything. So if I go back to the sales orders, let's create a new one. Let's use the same, uh, let's use the same customer. This is irrelevant to our example. Let's use a similar setup, same item, I'm going to use the same quantity, same dollar amount, for instance, so let's make it very similar. Um, okay, so let's now remove this, as just as I did in my previous example, and see what happens. So you remember that we have just set the revenue account responsible for these kind of transactions, as code mandatory with respect to the department. If I try to post, you see, the system has uh, thrown an error message, select a dimension value code for the dimension code, department for GL account 44100. So if I, uh, by, uh, by chance, has uh, left this field in, uh, blank, then the system will let me know that, uh, no, you have to specify it if you want to post to the revenue account because we want our reportings to be uh, specific, to be very accurate in that connection. And now I have to select uh, something. Since you remember um, um, on the customer, it said the value posting is also uh, set, or not also, but set to value posting blank. I can select anything. And since it's select, uh, select or set to uh, code mandatory on the GL account in question, uh, I can select any, uh, anything I want. So I could, for example, set it to the production. And now I am able to post. You see, no problem uh, anymore. And do you want to open the posted invoice? Yes, please. So if we go to the line, now you can see that uh, uh, department dimension is specified and uh, because it is specified we had no issues posting to the jail accounts. Uh, what is the, so what is the benefit of assigning dimensions to master data and jail accounts? Well, to, uh, first of all, it um, streamlines the process of entering transactions. If your company um, posts, for example, multiple invoices, multiple sales orders, purchase invoices, purchase orders, and so on, then it's very convenient to uh, set dimensions on the master data, such as customers, vendors, and items. Now, if you would like to prevent uh, users from making an 
an error and, and at the same time keep your uh, financial analysis as accurate as possible, then it is beneficial to set up dimension values, uh, dimensions and dimension values also uh, on the general ledger accounts. And this post has been uh, discussing how you can achieve this and contributes to the overall purpose that uh, uh, we at Encore have and that to help users to set up their dimensions and their uh, ERP system overall in the most efficient and effective way. If you have any questions or would like to have some assistance, we are happy to help you. You can visit our page, support page on um, Encore blog. So the address of this page is encorebusiness.com slash support. You can also contact us by dialing uh, phone number, which is toll free, 1-866-472-0824. And uh, we will be happy to assist you. Thank you for watching this video and reading this blog post. Goodbye.